My name is Dominic Šafránek, and I will present you the work I did with Antonia Aguirre and Josh Deutsch, and recently we are also joined with Dana Fayez at the University of Santa Cruz. Um, let me introduce uh, measuring observers' knowledge. We will start with observers' uncertainty, and we will play a game. As a prize for winning the game, we will uh, um, introduce the definition of observational uncertainty, and as a bonus, uh, you'll get the, some properties of the definition. Then we will move on to observers' knowledge, and finally, I'll show you some applications. So let's start with the game. Many of you know this game. This is the game uh, Guess a Famous Person. I'm just thinking of a famous person, and you're trying to guess what it is. OK, let's say we have 5,000 uh, 5, people that I can think of. And you ask, is it a man? Well, let's say I say yes, and uh, the amount of people reduces to 3,000. Then uh, you may ask, uh, what nationality is he? And I say, he's Austrian. And now you are down to 80. And since I'm a physicist, maybe you think I will think about a physicist, and well, you, are, you were right. Uh, now we are down to seven. And finally, you can ask, what is he known for? It's entropy. Well, as many of you have guessed already, I'm talking about Ludwig Boltzmann. So now let's talk about the mathematics. So what I introduced is a set, which is a set of famous people that, that what we agreed on is the, the set that we talk about. So generally, this can, this can be some set. Or uh, in physics, we use phase space or Hilbert space. And the question you were asking that represents course gaining, it is uh, basically a collection of possible answers I could give you that reduce the set to something uh, I, you, know, you have less uncertainty about. And the answer defines a macro state. So if I say yes, then that, that's a part of the Hilbert space, so generally the set that I talk about. And the person I think about is a micro state that was the Ludwig Boltzmann. So if you ask, is it a man, and I say yes, then I associate an entropy with it uh, that for some good mathematical reasons is a logarithm. Um, and I take the logarithm of the volume of this macro state, and the volume in this simple example is just the number of people that, use, that I still have in mind. So if the answer is a man, then I did this uh, logarithm volume. I ask a zoom, and I have another one. So if, if uh, instead I asked, uh, if I was thinking about a minetre, uh, and you ask me, is it a man, then obviously my uncertainty would be a logarithm of 2,000 instead of a logarithm of 3,000. Now, you can uh, introduce the similar kind of definition with multiple questions, or let's say multiple course gainings. So you ask me, is it a man, and I will, which nationality is it, then logarithm of the volume of the um, overlap of these macro states is logarithm of 80. And this motivates us to uh, introduce the general definition. Oh, no, not yet. Um, so sometimes the answer is not definite. Because there can be uh, uncertainty in microstate. There are two types. Uh, one is classical, and the other one is quantum. Classical is something that, you know, uh, the answer is out there, but nobody knows it, or maybe, maybe at least I don't. Um, but it's just a classical uncertainty. Then there is a quantum uncertainty, which has something to do that, uh, with the fact that some, not every answer can be, uh, uh, not, not every question can be answered with certainty. Um, so on the example of this classical uncertainty would be like, has Boltzmann ever wore, wear a beard? And maybe, I, I don't know, maybe he, did, he didn't. Maybe he should one, this one time, I just don't know. Um, but on a more fundamental level, uh, energy, I guess, it doesn't have a definite position. So there is this uncertainty that you know, is, is still there. So let's assume that probability of Boltzmann having always a beard was 90%. How would we modify this uncertainty we have about the system? Well, we would just add the uncertainty from receiving an indefinite answer. So if you ask me, did this, always, did this person always wear a beard, then, I, then the knowledge you will have after I answer, like with 90% we, he always did, will be this uncertainty from receiving an indefinite answer and me, plus mean uncertainty after learning the answer. And now this motivates us to introduce the definition. 
Um, so observe this uncertainty uh, about the microstate row after asking a series of questions is defined as uncertainty from receiving indefinite answers, where the, these are the probability of uh, receiving a set of answers in this order, i1 up to in, plus the mean uncertainty after learning the answers, where this is volume of mac macrostate. You can also see that this is the uh, Boltzmann entropy, uh, and this, these are the probabilities, so this together gives you the mean Boltzmann entropy, and this part here is the Shannon entropy. And uh, what we did, we just called this uh, entropy, this, this sum, an observational entropy. So let me tell you about some properties which uh, do not necessarily uh, are applicable only to that example I showed, but are more general. So let's say um, you start with some uncertainty you have about the microstate after asking question C1. If you ask another question, well, your uncertainty decreases, or to be more precise, at least it doesn't increase. And you can continue like that. In our example, I first ask, uh, or you first ask whether it was a man, then which nationality was he, then uh, um, uh, what profession was he, and uh, um, what he was he you known for. So as we learned, additional questions reduce the uncertainty. Um, which, this is kind of a mathematical proof that if you want to know more, you just ask more, which I think is quite nice. Um, you can ask, where does it end? Uh, or in other words, how much can you know? And it turns out that this is actually lower bounded by the von Neumann entropy, which is the inherent uncertainty in microstate, so you just cannot get below the bound. And obviously, it is bounded also from above by the logarithm of the volume of the entire Hel uh, Hilbert space, which is the maximum possible uncertainty. So while well, you can interpret this as observer's knowledge about the system, in our example, this maximum possible uncertainty was the logarithm of 5,000, and inherent uncertainty was logarithm of 1. So you can see that by asking these series of questions, we uh, minimize observer's uncertainty to, this, to its minimum. And now uh, about an example which was not uh, shown in our, um, you can ask when your additional question doesn't decrease your knowledge. Doesn't increase knowledge. Um, well, one obvious uh, case is when uh, uh, question C2 has been already answered by uh, the previous question. Let's say uh, I, you, uh, you ask me uh, what, uh, is it man or is it an Austrian man? And I, uh, after you ask me, is it an Austrian man? Uh, you ask me, is, it, is, is he Austrian? And obviously, if you ask me the second question, I don't give you any new information. Um, also, you might already know everything about, uh, about the microstate, and then uh, getting to asking more questions, it doesn't increase your knowledge because you already know everything. So these are so, sorts of um, cases uh, which holds in classic case, although in quantum case as well. And now to purely uh, quantum cases, what can also happen is that information content of the microstate can be already exhausted by asking the first question. Um, this, this is connected to another example, which, you know, uh, asking some question prevents you from getting to know more. Um, and uh, despite this um, analogous example, this is purely quantum mechanical um, uh, feature. So as an example in quantum mechanics, uh, let's say uh, you have an energy, I can say it's some energy, but uh, uh, you don't know what energy it is. Uh, and if you first measure a position of that particle, um, then uh, you destroy the information about energy eigenstate, so you, you prevent it yourself from getting to know more about, about the system. Generally, those, those sorts of questions that prevents you to get in no more are the ones that uh, do not commute with the density matrix. Also, uh, in quantum physics, the order of question matters. Again, if, you, if I measure um, energy and the position, is the, uh, I get different uncertainty than if I do it the other way around. And finally, we are getting to knowledge. So, let me show you another example. Let's say I'm staring in, uh, into some window and my friend asks me, what are you staring at? 
And I tell him, well, people. So this is what he thinks that I'm staring at, but, but soon he starts to suspect that I'm actually not telling him uh, the entire truth and that I, have, that I have some extra knowledge I didn't share with him. Um, well, I can just say that knowledge is knowing some, something outside the usual. And how, how do I define it? Well, knowing something the usual is basically um, can be measured as, as like a distance of what I know from what is usual. And this is defined by the callback liber divergence, which is a measure of distance between two probability distributions. So let's say uh, this, is, this is the kind of uniform or maximum uncertain state, and uh, these probabilities give you some kind of answers or probability over answers uh, you get if you, uh, um, if you ask about uh, this uniform maximum uncertain state. So this is, this is kind of the usual, and this is something which is extra. And uh, if, if this differs uh, more from, from this, if, if uh, the probability distribution is very different from this one, then I say, well, I have extra knowledge. Well, so this definition kind of makes sense, but how does it connect to the previous topic I was talking about? And as it turns out, this knowledge defined this way is exactly equal to the maximal uncertainty minus the observer's uncertainty, or in other words, observational entropy. Um, in a, you can also call this total achievable knowledge, although I would like to stress out that it is not really achievable. Uh, because what you can achieve by asking question is this total achievable knowledge minus for Neumann entropy. So let's say this, is, this can be achievable only by some super being, but as an observer, you cannot achieve this. And uh, this, this theorem uh, just follows directly from what I showed before about observation entropy, because this is just a constant. Now, what is this good for, apart from describing games? Well, we applied uh, this notion to uh, try to describe um, ther thermalization of gas, or rather expanding gas, because my, our motivation was to define some entropy that increases even for isolated system, because that is not studied that well, and at the same time, um, entropy that kind of makes sense. So what do I mean uh, by making sense is that I would like that entropy to reproduce thermodynamic entropy when the system is in equilibrium. So thermodynamic entropy is defined basically purely by the number of particles, uh, temperature, and uh, boundary conditions, and, um, and jumps uh, to a different value, which is constant, when the boundary condition changes. So when I remove this partition here, then the thermodynamic entropy immediately jumps to a different value. But this thermal entropy doesn't tell us anything about the dynamics of the system, so our motivation was to create some kind of entropy which covers the dynamics, but also uh, corresponds to the original notion uh, when uh, the system equilibrates. And observational entropy is just that, that entropy. Uh, so on this simple example of just, um, of just two partitions, uh, let's say I define uh, the observation entropy very I first ask the question what is the energy of the first part of the system, which is this one, then the second part, which is this one, um, and this entropy has exactly the same, uh, exactly the property I was talking about, that uh, when I remove the, uh, this boundary here at time t equals 30, it increases very quickly to some value that approximates the thermodynamic entropy, which is uh, shown here as the green line, and uh, as well here. So this is exactly the function. You can also interpret this function as, the, um, as a measure how close these regions um, uh, are to each other, in, um, how close to equilibrium these two regions are. And as, as has been shown just about three weeks ago by Philip Strasberg, is that the entropy production of, of this quantity, uh, or the change in observation entropy, is the usual uh, heat over the temperature when you start in, uh, in initial thermal states, let's say thermal state in here and thermal states in there. So now I'm getting to the conclusions. Observers' uncertainty, which we called observational entropy, measures the amount of uncertainty an observer has about the system after he asks a series of questions. It has many interesting properties. Uh, some of them exhibit the only quantum systems, and such as uh, order of question methods, maximal knowledge also is not always achievable, and a few others I didn't talk about. Um, observer's knowledge is total achievable knowledge minus the observer's uncertainty, and this, 
this pretty nice story, in my opinion, is good for resolving a long standing question as to which entropy is relevant for isolated quantum systems. Thank you.